All for this evening. Certainly, Mr. D'Amelio. Here. Mr. Oliva. Here. Mr. Plusky. Here. Uh, Mr. Siegel. Here. Mr. Lewis. Here. Mr. McGarity. Here. Dr. Hart. Here. Mr. Holmes. Here. And Mr. Wexler. Here. Acting Chief, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First item is the Township Auditor Update. I have reviewed the expenses and disbursements for this period. Uh, I found no uh, material variances and or irregularities, and all my questions were satisfactorily answered. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Any questions for the auditor? Next item is assistance form. We have one registered speaker, Mr. Don Kelly. Evening, uh, Donald Kelly, 135 East Hathaway Lane, Havertown, Pennsylvania. Um, I'd like um, you all to recall what a great job you did uh, in converting that, um, that bubblegum factory into the YMCA and the empty vacant quarry into that great shopping center. And of course, the, the gem of it all, the uh, old Haverford State Hospital into this wonderful Haverford Reserve and Creck Center. And it wasn't, you didn't take the simple way of just whatever is quick and easy or most profitable. You really brought a lot of thinking to it. And that particularly the Haverford Reserve managed, I think, ably by commissioners, as I recall, Lewis and D'Amelio, a complicated process, but we ended up with something great. So I'm here to encourage you to support the proposal uh, for a planning grant to DCED uh, <clears throat> for the, the old municipal building site, but not simply that site, but the entire triangle um, of Eagle and Darby Roads. It's a very strategically located uh, site and has potential for being something special. Uh, but it takes some vision, it takes some community participation, it takes some professionalism to bring a pro the thinking and planning process to something that is special. You've done it before very well. I would encourage you to support this grant proposal so we can do it again for this very special place. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Are there any, anyone in the audience that would like to address the Board of Commissioners on agenda items this evening? There being none, that's great. Uh, Don, thank you for your comments. I think we, uh, when you alluded to the good job we did, I think we did. When we built this building, we actually uh, requested a Rack B grant, and part of that Rack B grant that we received for several was the development of that triangle. And there's money that was part of the grant for that as well. So, uh, and we have obligations under that grant, what we have to do with that. We have to generate jobs. I think Mr. Siegel's got some details on that, but we have to generate 18 jobs with the development, and we have to look at the development. So we've received one grant to, to look at that already as well. So that's part of the, was part of this building. And uh, I have no problem if we can get some expertise to assist us with that requirement that we have from the grant for this building and to generate those 18 jobs which we're required to do from here. I don't know if we can do it with a parking lot, but we can, you know, we have to, uh, that's the grant that we, we got for this building is, was part, the redevelopment of that site was part of that grant. So um, anyway, we'll be talking about that more when we get to that agenda item. Next item is the approval of minutes. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. D'Amelio. Make a motion to approve uh, the regular meeting minutes of July 9th, 2018. Second. Motion made and seconded by Mr. Siegel. Any discussions, corrections, additions, and deletions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. And Mr. Wexler? Yes, item five is the approval of warrants. Mr. Holmes. Uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, I, I move we approve warrant number eight of 2018, totaling $4,463,204.01, comprising the general and sewer fund payroll for July 12, 2018, in the amount of $653,900.09. Mr. 
general and sewer fund payroll for July 26th, 2018 in the amount of $675,911.96. General and sewer fund payroll for August 9 of 2018 in the amount of $651,850.71. General fund disbursements number eight of 2018 in the amount of $1,766,538.17. Sewer fund disbursements, number eight of 2018, the amount of $137,068.12. Community development block grant fund disbursement, number eight of 2018, in the amount of $83,289.02. A capital project fund disbursement of number eight of 2018, the amount of $472,346.01. Pennsylvania Unemployment Compensation Benefits, ACH Payments, second quarter of 2018, in the amount of $3,864, and a credit card statement ending July 27 of 2018 in the amount of $18,435.93. Second. Motion made and second. Any questions on the credit card bill? Looks pretty big this month. Uh, Mr. President, yeah, the credit card bill does uh, seem oddly uh, big this month. I assume uh, that this is associated with um, recreation department payments that it makes in advance of some of the fall and winter <coughs> tickets and things like that that are purchased in advance. Um, I know that any questions that our auditor had um, for that and any other entries in the warrants were um, raised uh, by him and answered to his satisfaction by our staff. Um, and uh, I recommend that we adopt the warrants. Any other questions or comments? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Item number six, the approval of the 2019 budget adoption schedule. Mr. Holmes? Uh, Mr. President, um, I move we adopt. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to put it in front of us. But first, I move we adopt our 2019 budget adoption schedule. Second. Motion made and second. Okay. Um, this is uh, obviously the schedule that we do each year. I just want to read the details out loud. I'm just putting it up on my screen. So. Yes. So. Um, the presentation of the manager's budget, uh, as it has been done for a number of years, will be presented to each of us uh, sometime prior to October 31st, 2018. Um, we have scheduled uh, Monday, November 19th of 2018 at 7 p.m. Our first special, special budget meeting of the board. As you recall, that is a meeting set aside solely for the purpose of um, adopting a preliminary budget and then um, engaging in uh, discussions and analysis of the same. And then our second and final presentation is done at the regularly scheduled official meeting of the board, which will be Monday, December 10th of 2018, also scheduled for 7 p.m. That will be the first item in the December 10, 2018 meeting, uh, but the first of what would otherwise be a regularly scheduled regular agenda meeting. Thank you for the clarification. Any other questions or comments? Have one second there, Mr. Wexler. Take it, time. That's right. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm worried about this. I'm going to reboot that. Go right with you. Mr. D'Amelio. Yes. Mr. Oliva. Yes. Mr. McCluskey. Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. McGarrity. Yes. Dr. Hart. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Mr. Wex. Yes. Item seven. Uh, Mr. President, motion to adopt the second readings, uh, reading of ordinance number P14-2018, further amending and supplementing chapter 86, fire prevention, section 86-5, additions, deletions, and modifications to the fire prevention code, and adding provisions for false fire alarms. Second. Motion made and second. Any questions? This is the second reading. I think we discussed this last week. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Wex? Yes. Item 8. 
Mr. President. Mr. Siegel. Excuse me. Motion to adopt the second reading of ordinance uh, number P16-2018 authorizing the amended and restated lease agreement with Unisite Omnipoint PA Tower Venture LLC for certain areas located at the Township Public Works site off of 2080 Old Westchester Pike, subject to review by the Township Solicitor and further subject to the approval of the Township Manager of the final document. Second. Motion made and second. Any questions? Again, it's the second reading. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Item number nine. Mr. McCluskey, I think. Uh, item number nine, motion to adopt the second reading of ordinance number P17-2018, authorizing traffic restrictions on the following highways. Through traffic restrictions, added Darby Road medium crossover at exit entrance of the Haverford Township Building, 1014 Darby Road. Do not enter an emergency and authorized vehicles only. Right turn only on Darby Road for non-emergency vehicles to be installed. Special purpose parking on Roosevelt Avenue at Harding Avenue along the side of 201 Harding Avenue, Havertown. Motion made and second, Mr. Oliva. Any questions? Please call the roll. Sure. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Item 10. Ordinance P18-2018, motion to adopt the first reading ordinance of number P18-2018, authorizing traffic restrictions on the following highways. Established stop intersections. Paddock Road, north direction of travel at Woodley Road. Established thicker parking only on Beverly Road, east side between Cathmere Road and Strathmere Road. School days, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Valid parking exempt. Special purposes zone, parking zones across from 637 San Marino Avenue between 634 and 640 San Marino Avenue, Bryn Mawr, PA. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. And Mr. Wax? Yes. Item 11. I, before we go to item 11, can I ask one question? Certainly. Just about that particular ordinance I should have asked before we voted. The special purpose parking zones, is that one parking area or is it two? It's one parking spot. Great. Thanks. Item 11, resolution 2100 2018. Mr. President. Mr. Oliva. Motion to adopt resolution number 2100. 2018, authorizing the township manager and the township engineer to apply for a DCD grant, the Oakmont Triangle grant will provide a one-to-one -one match of up to $25,000. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Mr. President. Mr. Siegel. Um, as you mentioned, I, I want to raise some concerns I have with this uh, resolution, um, which I think is sort of ill-timed based on what the property committee is doing, and also sort of ill-directed based on some other issues. First, um, in order to build this building, we had to, we obtained a RACP grant from the state of Pennsylvania. In that grant application, we assured um, the Commonwealth that we expected that development of the site where the existing town, where the former township building was, would add, quote, an additional 18 full-time equivalent jobs that can be attributed to the project, period, unquote. That was part of the condition of obtaining that um, grant. As a practical matter, that's part of the need of the township to assure that we develop the grant. Second, as part of the materials that were provided last week at our work session, some of the some of the items raised 
uh, significantly the third paragraph, talked about addressing long-term interests and to essentially consider um, removing development in that area and turning what is currently business property, the uh, gas station, as well as the Chinese restaurant, into essentially passive property that would uh, decrease the tax rolls if it's not used for those purposes. I have real concerns about this board taking any steps that could be construed as a message that we are removing businesses from the township or that that is even contemplated. It raises questions legally. It raises questions that this board has never um, <clears throat> proposed removing business property from the town from the township rolls. More importantly, the DCED grant process that this is suggested that we would apply for are called planning grants. Um, according to DCED's uh, eligible uses of funds for planning grants, the activities include, and the, the four that they cite are planning toward designation under the KC Keystone Communities Program. That's not listed in this proposal. Implementing a business development survey in preparation of a business development strategy. That's not listed in this proposal. Planning for the establishment of a neighborhood improvement district, business improvement district, or a downtown improvement district. That's not included in this proposal. And finally, architectural engineering, legal consulting, and other soft costs and fees required to implement a construction project uh, designed to improve and or revitalize a neighborhood or, or community, such as a streetscape, anchor building, or development projects. That's not in this proposal. So I have significant concerns that we are proposing applying for a grant when none of the proposal comes within the parameters of the information provided by DCED to whom we're making the proposal. And with regard to those properties, I've already talked about the fact that they are business properties. Those are properties that have remained occupied for years without any issues relating to parking. We had already requested and charged the our engineers, Pannoni, with doing a parking study of the area so that the board could determine if additional public parking was needed. I believe that's also in conjunction with the issues in the, in the, um, down, further down in the um, area near where the new pub opened. Um, so I also note that the existing comprehensive plan did not include or contemplate uh, converting two businesses to community use. Um, and we are contemplating, as there was a discussion in this room, uh, adding a, an area in front of the stadium design to be more of community use. Um, and I also, as an analogy, point out that in Lower Merion, where they are now doing a massive construction project on Cricket Avenue, replacing a large parking lot with a very large structure, they did not add any new parking. So I have real concerns and would suggest that this board should oppose this, uh, uh, as I do not see that our spending $25,000 toward this grant is in the best interests of either the community or the taxpayers. Thank you, Mr. Siegel. Other comments? Yes, um, I totally disagree with uh, Dan Siegel's opinion. I believe that in those, in the, um, we should always look for, um, the ways to make this township um, nicer. Um, that being, if there's businesses, um, you know, prior to this, we have taken houses out of, um, you know, and made parking lots out of those houses, um, houses that were in the tax rolls. We have removed them from the tax rolls, and we have um, put in parking lots uh, for our baseball leagues and for YMCA. Uh, um, for the YMCA, two houses were taken. Uh, and that was, um, was another issue for that. Uh, the DCD does provide um, in their planning, uh, this is a planning grant. So um, I, I just I, I think that we need to be looking at things differently. Um, we need to bring in a consultant and look at this property um, and look at it not just for the
the building itself, but what we're going to do in the future for this township. If that means that we have to, that the plan will be um, that, that we do buy business property and, and create a park out of it, um, you know, that's something for this board to, to determine. So why not have all of the information, have a consultant look at this, and tell us what's best. The consultant can take in uh, the fact that we have to provide 18 new jobs for this or what, what the restrictions were for the, DC, uh, for the grant, for the RACB grant. Um, he can take that into consideration. Um, but I think this is something we should do. And I don't think we should waste any more time in um, going back and forth uh, on something that is, you know, it's something we should be doing. <clears throat> Mr. President. Yeah, I just, I would concur with uh, Mr. Commissioner Oliva on this. It seems to me that um, the absolute worst case is that we find the best use for the township building. Um, we may or may not do something with the other properties, but I think we'll, from this study, we'll have a better idea of what we should be doing with the township building, whether that's selling it, whether that's taking it down. I don't know what the options would be, but I think uh, a study is warranted. So I concur with Mr. Oliva uh, in supporting this uh, resolution. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Any other comments? I, I, I guess I'm confused. What, why are we losing the, the tax revenues from two businesses? That's the question I want to know. Why are we losing them? He's we're not. Assuming we're not. Assuming we're taking, taking those businesses. We're not, any, any, well, any, any, we're not losing any revenue from any businesses. This is just a grant to see what we could do in the future. That's all it is. There, there is no, nothing on the table right now to take away businesses. Okay. Mr. Mr. Wexler. Mr. McCloskey. If, if I could, I, I think um, you may. Commissioner Siegel raised some valid and, and, and real concerns about some of the language uh, that was in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, consideration right. that we discussed last week at the work session. In the current configuration of this language, though, there, there is no uh, mention of parking and there's no mention of those two specific properties. It does talk about the Oakmont Triangle considering it as a whole. Um, I think to sort of, to, to back up, what, what this is, is it's a grant uh, to have someone with a professional mindset look at that area and look at that space and look at that building and advise us on what the potential is for it and what are the possibilities for it. Um, now, how this came about um, with some bumps in the road uh, is regrettable. There were certainly some language last week that would likely should not have been in there and would not apply, but I think that has all been removed. Because as Commissioner Siegel noted, we don't want to tell an expert um, that we need to have parking. The expert will have to consider uh, the 18 jobs that will be created because that's part of um, sort of, it's, it's, it's like when you sell a property or something and you have a debt on it, you know, that has to be taken into consideration. So anything that's done with this property has to be in consideration of what we've already agreed to do based on the RACB grant. Um, but that's something that an expert can tell us and can tell us within those confines and within those structures, uh, what are our potential and what are the best possible uses. Um, so at the end of the day, this is a grant which we would apply for, not saying that we would get, we would apply for and it would be a matching grant for up to $25,000. Our contribution would be 25 and it would be matched by 25. Um, you know, whether that is ultimately successful because I, I think the points uh, we, we, we may want to consider uh, certainly adding it into any application that is made, Larry, um, to consider, as Dan mentioned, uh, the categories for which the funds are, are awarded. So therefore, maybe our application in the grant uh, should, should take that into consideration and use that type of language. But I think as far as what we're voting on tonight, just so the public is very clear, what we're voting on tonight is to allow the township under... Larry and the employees to file a grant proposal. That's all it is, is to file a grant proposal to the DCED um, to assist us in hiring an expert to aid in our decision making. Uh, nobody on this board, you know, we all, we all probably have 
nine different opinions as to what should go in that site and what should be included. And I can assure you uh, the business property owners around there and the residents around there all have 2,200 different opinions. Um, but I think we should have an opinion of somebody uh, who can provide us an expert opinion so that we can you know, develop that area further for businesses uh, and for the residents. Thank you, Mr. McCluskey. Mr. Holmes. Uh, Mr. President, thanks. Uh, one highly technical point, Mr. Levi, I've got to respond. You, you referred to um, a very loaded word, taken, when you talked about the properties for the YMCA. Those, uh, yeah. And, I'm sorry, and if I not... could just correct the record for everybody. The YMCA purchased at an arm's length transaction the properties that were located at that corner. We changed the zoning for it, though. Into parking. There was no official action. There was no taking for Fifth no, no, Amendment. That's, no. that's true. State I, equivalent I, purposes. I, so I, just, I misspoke. Very clear. Um, and I appreciate that. And I please don't mistake my, my tone for anything other than I just wanted to correct the record. I, I, I'd like to make a, a recommendation if I can, because it, this is the second week, obviously, of us talking about this. And what we have, we have people in the town who, are, you know, everybody here on the board who some people keep their opinions fairly reserved some of us wear them on their sleeves we have great volunteers who have ideas and they talk about them um, however this came to us in the manner it came to us last week some people wanted to make changes I would recommend one more set of changes to this resolution if I may and I don't know whether it'll address mr. Siegel's concerns entirely but it will at least address a concern of mine that has been raised by Dan and raised legitimately the issue is the township building. Including the Oakmont Triangle in this resolution seems to suggest a result that's disquieting to a couple of us on the board. So if the title of this resolution could be changed to DCED planning grant application for the former township building, and the third paragraph, whereas paragraph, can take out the last clause as well as the Oakmont Triangle, and the therefore paragraph at the end could say a DCED planning grant for the former township building, then, I, then I'll, I'll support this resolution. And I think that eliminates any of the concerns about previous language that was in this that might have suggested that this was results oriented when this resolution was considered and drafted, as opposed to we're looking for some money to help us, maybe even just to reimburse us for money we've spent on consultants to address what we can do with the township building. So Mr. Leva, this is your resolution, so any recommendation that I make has to be approved by you and seconded by our, and then the approval has to be approved by Commissioner D'Amelio as well. But I'd like to recommend that you just, that we that we remove or amend the change, the, uh, the references to the Oakmont Triangle and just make this about the township building. Can I, can I just comment on that? I mean, yeah. sure. I, I, I recognize and appreciate the concerns regarding the other properties that are privately owned at, at within that area. Um, and I think that's important that that language is not in what we vote on tonight. But encompassed in the Oakmont Triangle is a portion of property that we already own in terms of that fountain and the area where there where we supply electricity and we supply water. Um, and that's right at that corner. And there's also the property that runs along that is east and that is along Darby Road across from the apartment building that is neither private property nor township property but owned by SEPTA. And I would think that an expert looking even at our property would have to, t even, even at the township building, would have to take into account um, the SEPTA property and the property where the fountain is now that is already ours. Now, However you want to phrase that, that's fine. But I, I, you know, the Oakmont Triangle does not just encompass the property building and the gas station and the restaurant. But it does encompass those businesses as well. And it does make a few people concerned. And it, it, I don't see the harm in removing references to the Arc Oakmont Triangle because obviously any person that we hire to advise us on this is going to take into account the entire region, is going to take into account our obligations under the... Um, under the RACB grant, and uh, and assume, frankly, is going to do the yeah. job. I mean, I, I when when my, that that's fu that's fine, and and I would certainly be agreeable if if that's something that would make everybody feel more comfortable. But I mean, I I would think it would also include the the portion of the businesses along Eagle Road. 
right? I mean, that's part of that triangle. It's all contiguous property. I, I, I hear what you're saying, yeah, but I, 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 we don't have it defined in here either, so. We, I do. Well, well, the use of the township building, I mean, one, one, of, the, one, one of the concerns is that we could, we could end up wasting a lot of time and we could, we could lose opportunities if, while well, trying to figure out what to do with the township building that we have right now, and fairly soon should come to a conclusion as to whether or not we're gonna use it temporarily or whether or not we're gonna um, prepare to use it you know, on a more permanent basis in, in the way we're talking about. Um, if we then, if, if, if this project grows bigger and grows to all the businesses on Eagle Road and all the businesses up and down both sides of Darby Road and the Hathaway Cutoff, I think that, uh, um, I, I don't think, I would regret that if we ended up losing time on the township building because, it, because the, the job itself expanded so much. And again, if that's ultimately what the board would like to do, the board can, I'm just trying to no, I, I agree with you. I, resolution I'm without just, any violence. I, I agree with you. I, I'm just saying, I don't think, I just think that the consideration of the property is in, is in conjunction with all the surrounding properties as well. But if, they're, they're legitimate concerns, and I understand. So if, you know, I, it's not my motion, um, but if, if the removal of the language helps, I mean, the, the goal, the goal from my perspective is to get an expert to tell us what to do with that property and to do, you know, with the Quatrani building and, and an expert to advise yeah. us just, what to do and then the nine of us yeah, vote. Just, well, yeah, but I would, I'd like to consider the whole thing. I, I think the SEPTA property is is something we should be considering also in that in that that working with SEPTA we may be able to um, increase the the value of that property, um, create a, a larger parking area um, for that property. So I'd like to consider the whole thing, the whole triangle. That's, that's. I, I, think what Larry, I think what Larry's saying though is that we've removed that language and, and expert, and don't, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, Larry, but if, 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 we've so removed that, okay. if we've removed that language, we eliminate any potential that it is uh, misleading in, in our language. But an expert who's examining what we should do with that property is necessarily going to consider the, the entirety of it. Jason Proctor. That language in there. It's, and this, this. It's as if I said it. Only calmer. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Mr. D'Amelio. I think, and it, obviously, um, I'm not an expert on uh, these kind of studies, but I would think, uh, we talked about, um, Mr. McCluskey, you talked about the triangle, and I agree that you look at from the uh, fountain, probably uh, the SEPTA property and parts of Eagle Road. I think in order to do an effective study, you would need to look at that entire area. Um, so maybe we can add, can we add, leave the Oakmont Triangle and add the township building to it? Would that? I, I, my suggestion would, if I could, uh, listening to the discussion, we keep referring to the building. It's a property. I think we want the consultant to look at the township property, and I think we just specify and also provide considerations for long-term use of the adjacent privately owned property, you know, contigu contiguous to that property. That a as you've all stated, a decent consultant is going to have to look at the look at, at the adjacent property. So if we if we say township and public owned property, because SEPTA is public owned property, I would suspect, and adjacent private property, I think we're covered, and, and I think it sounds as if that would. Well, it can't be more split the difference, so well, yeah. it can't be just deceptive property. Well, I mean, I if I was a business owner, if I owned the restaurant or the gas station, based on our discussion, I'd be very concerned about eminent domain and considerations there, or, or what I I'd get my realtor to appraise this thing pretty high tomorrow, you know, if, if we're going to have to buy it or something like that. So, I we're, we're, our intention isn't to go out and and solicit property or take it over, but we want a consultant to look at and, and give us advice on what to do with the property that we just vacated and the adjacent property. Any long-term plan, but that's what we're doing. Yep. We're, Commissioner Oliva made me clear that that's not what this, the intent of this resolution is to take businesses. Correct. That's not the intent. So, I mean, to me, we're almost putting it out there that we are doing it when we're not. We're not that doing that. Right. We're looking at the Oakmont Triangle, which includes businesses. It's the whole entire encompasses the whole area. I, I agree. Can, what, what is what is the Change in language that's okay. suggested. Sorry, Mr. Holmes. Well, well no. if I take into account Mr. Wexler's suggestion, 
it would be the best uses for the former township building and any other township property. publicly owned property? Well, I would say township, we own the property, so the township property also includes a building. And then adjacent so property. Township yeah. property, period. I, I, I don't think we should say anything about adjacent private property in this. And, okay. that's, and my think, problem, uh, it's Commissioner D'Amelio, if, if I may, when you said the, Oakmont, the issue about the Oakmont Triangle is the Oakmont Triangle is not defined in this resolution. And it seems like I'm going to resolve to hire an expert to tell us what to do with this big block of property you know, that makes it that in my head, the Oakmont Triangle starts at the fountain and ends at the sidewalk on Eagle. And I, I, don't, I don't need to hire a consultant right now to tell me what to do with that entire triangle because 95% of that is owned by private entities. Um, I'd like to get a consultant to tell us what to do with the former town, advise us what to do with the former township building and take into account, you know, uh, the existing businesses or help us formulate a plan where we do something um, where we try to take on a bigger issue, you know, not unlike the, ta the talk we had about Eagle Road years ago, not unlike the talk we have any time we're trying to, to um, uh, improve and modernize uh, our various business districts. But I, the use of the Oakmont Triangle just concerns me. Publicly owned property because I'd like to include... SEPTA? SEPTA. Yeah. <laughs> So if we said township that? property and other publicly owned property, that would cover SEPTA, that would cover anything the township owns, including, I guess, the fountain area, and it, it would calm down any business owners who <laughs> are concerned now because of two weeks of conversation. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Siegel. I, I just want to point out a couple things that seem to have been lost in this discussion. Uh, planning for the township building, um, or the former township building, should have begun years ago. Uh -huh. uh, in 2017 and 2016, inexplicably, the property committee never met and therefore never addressed the future of a building that we knew needed to be addressed. This year, the property committee met in March um, after I was uh, appointed chair, and the property committee unanimously agreed, and the township has retained a consultant to advise us now on uh, future possible uses of the township building. Um, this resolution conflicts in the sense that it contemplates funding in 2019 when we would anticipate a report from that uh, consultant sometime in the next couple of months. Um, I met with Mr. Gentili and members of the township staff this week to, to address the status of that. So it is both disingenuous particularly of some members of this board, yeah, and a bit disquieting that we are ignoring the role of the property committee um, or potentially saying that it should not be doing what is its job as, as board members, of the, as, as elected officials here, to be looking at that. Um, and are we stopping a process that should have begun, in my opinion, years <laughs> ago, but for inexplicable reasons wasn't? Or are we going to further delay um, addressing this? And I think both of those uh, situations weren't good, and we need to move forward now. Mr. Siegel, can I ask you a question? Right. The, the property committee cannot vote to spend money. That's what this Board of Commissioners does, and that's what this resolution is saying. So that's, that's why it's here. And the property committee... Um, did not unanimously vote because I'm on the property committee and I didn't vote for anything. I wasn't at the March meeting. So they couldn't have unanimously voted if I was not there. All, right. All members who were there voted and I, 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 have to, I can't ignore this anymore. You were chair for the last two years and have done no, did nothing on the property committee, and suddenly this becomes an urgent issue. And it is time for this board to move forward. And to say that the property committee did not, does not spend money or is not authorized to is inconsistent with what has happened with the process with this particular building and the role of the property committee in the various years in which I've chaired it. We appointed and retained with the approval of the township manager and the township committee, architects, 
engineers, et cetera, to advise on the feasibility of this site. Committees have the ability with the approval of the township manager to take those actions. To say that they don't emasculates those committees and is further just inaccurate. That was not, that was not my statement. My statement was that this Board of Commissioners is the one who spends money. The committees cannot vote to spend money. Can they do that, Mr. Siegel? Yes, they right. can they spend money spend with any the money. authorization of the township they manager. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm gonna get the discussion back to the matter at hand. This, this vote board has to vote to spend money, not right. the property committee. Mr. Mr. Holmes, you have one more item before we I call a vote. Well, I just yeah. Just call I, a I vote, just, please. No, no. But if I could, no. Mr. Leva, I just want to. I, I I do want to remind the public. It had been. Um, we did. We did think we were going to be using the township building for a, a fairly significant, um, although temporary, use, and 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 it is. Still. It, it, there is a slightly emergent and a. a, a, a kind of a, a newer notion of the township building being freer sooner than we expected for reasons that we've discussed in executive session. And so I, you know, the, whether or not somebody is the, pre, is the head of the, uh, of the property committee, this board's had plenty to think about in the last couple of years. And uh, we didn't spend a great deal of time, any of the nine of us talking about what we we're gonna do with the township building, but now it's time for us to do so. And if we can get $25,000 from the state, even if it's to help us pay reimburse ourselves for a consultant who's already given us this advice, as I said this last week, I can't see any reason not to do that. And I don't think this in any way abrogates the rule of the, of the property committee. Um, and, you know, it remains my goal, and I think all of our goals, to do everything every year better than we did them the year before. So 2018, if we can get 25,000 bucks, it's my suggestion that we try. So. I'd like, Mr. Lever, for you to consider the amendment that I suggested about the Oakmont Triangle, because um, I do think that whether we intend to send the message, I think it may, I think a message may land on people that we don't I, intend for them to get. I, I will go with what, with your, your changes. Does okay. Mr. D'Amelio agree? I'll concur with that, but I, I, can I ask a question still? Sure, go ahead. And Dan, it's just the, the fact, I, I'm kind of agreeing with Mario. I mean, I don't recall us agreeing to pay for a consultant for the the township, the old township building. I don't agree with it coming before this board. Am I incorrect? The property committee recommendation was presented to the township manager because it is an expense that is within his discretion under the limit that requires a vote by this board it is consistent with how the property committee has performed its role in the probably five or six years in which i was chair and it is how other committees operate when they need funding for items that are that do not require authorization of this board because they are within the discretionary uh, approval of the township manager. Okay. But, but if that's correct, I would have presented that to this board of commissioners. I, I mean, you did, I did that report March? that the property committee met and agreed to retain a consultant. I can find that in the minutes. Okay. But I, know I, we I did. honestly don't recall. Do you know how much was that, Larry? Do you have can, we, can we stop? Let's, let's get back to the matter. Hand. We're tenants no, no. back taxpayers okay, money. No, no. I just want an answer. Right. How much uh, was well, that? Larry will get the answer. Sure. Yeah. I'll have to research, but I, it has to be under ten thousand. Okay. Can we just call? Okay. Hold the book, please. The, so we let me just make sure we got the language right. We've changed it to township, the former township headquarters property or township, township uh, property. administration property and adjacent properties. Adjacent public. Adjacent public property. Sorry, right with that, Mr. Wexler, could you repeat that one more time? With Author, that? to apply for a DCD planning grant for the former Haverford Township. Headquarters property or with uh, uh, an adjacent public property. Thank you. And that's in the third paragraph, right? For anybody to Correct. Listen. To the third paragraph. And it's in the and in the and in the header. And I, I'll just add my two cents. I mean, twenty-five thousand dollars to me. We received a million-dollar grant for part of this purpose, so it seems like a small price to get some consultant expertise to assist with what we're required to do under the existing grant for twenty-five thousand out of the million. Um, I, I think it's not going to kill us, and, and I think it could be money well spent. So, Mr. Gentile, would you please call a roll? Certainly, Mr. D'Amelio. Yes. Mr. Oliva. 
Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? No. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarity? No. Dr. Hart? No. Mr. Holmes? Uh, yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Item number 12, Resolution 2101, Hafford Township Day. Mr. President. Mr. Oliva. I'd like to make the motion to adopt resolution number 2101, 2018, designating Chief John Viola to execute any and all documents with PADOT and be responsible for the safety and welfare of residents utilizing state highways on Haverford Township Day, Saturday, October 6, 2018. Second. Motion made and second. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Item 13. <coughs> Mr. Uh, to Tucker. adopt uh, resolution 2102-2018, authorizing the township manager to file application for tra traffic signal at Manoa and Karakong Road. Second. That was made in second. I think we talked about this last week. This is a pedestrian crossing signal, not a traffic light. Uh, it's a button and painting on the roads to allow pedestrians to cross at that intersection. Any questions? Uh, what kind oh, of... Uh, what? Just, um, yeah, what? I'm thinking of people coming down Manoa. Well, I guess when I say down, I guess I mean north. Coming down from Erlington. Going under the train tracks, and yes, then right there, we're at gonna that have new intersection, there, right on that side, um, there will be a very similar to what we have now, but it's, it's a little bit more sophisticated. We'll have a solar top, yeah, um, and it'll be a pedestrian crossing sign. Right underneath that sign will be um, orange or yellow um, flashers, and it will be a push button when residents, if someone wants to cross on a road over onto uh, Caracon Drive, they push the button and the lights flash. We requested that uh, we uh, that when PennDOT was going to do that work there um, to redo the bridge, we thought that that would be. Can we make sure that a warning yeah. is put on Manoa Road between that train, between the train bridge uh, and Burlington? It will not be between the. It'll be on. No, we need a warning there because people come under the people. People who aren't expecting this. Well, you mean a warning? Come flying sign? down Manoa. Oh, yeah. We can, we I can mean, we need yeah, to. That, that, it just it seems to me that the first person who pushes that light and it starts blinking and they just start to walk across Manoa thinking they're fine. Um, you know, they're going to be like our canaries in the coal mine when people are coming flying down Manoa and not used to seeing a blinking pedestrian light there. And I think we want to warn them as much because we have the natural visual impediment of those train tracks on the way down. So people aren't even going to see that there's a cross, you know, a, a blinking pedestrian sign until they've already come out from under those tracks. And by then they're motoring. Sure, I understand. Um, we, we can certainly, yes, pen that. How, know, like, on, Mon is, on Montgomery Avenue, they warn you that the light, light's turning light red light all the way down no, past the SEPTA train? I, I, pen dot was very acceptable to that when we did it on Vermont Road, so I think it Larry, should not be. Is there any? Go ahead, Mary. Is there everywhere question, else that we, I've seen those in the township is a long right view. There? I'm sorry? Isn't that being done? Aren't they redoing that bridge and... Changing redoing, that intersection? They're redoing the intersection. There's going to be Old Manoa Road will come, uh, will come out, and there will be, uh, will go out onto, directly over onto Caracon Drive. There's, they're, they're not changing the whole uh, structure. The, the Manoa Road will still come down. There's not going to be a stop sign there or anything. Uh, right. We I'm saying, asked, or do we want to do this or just wait till that is all complete? No, and then we don't. We don't do this. We don't get it. That's being done. We actually asked myself, Mr. Hart, uh, Mr. Pannoni, the staff, Chuck, uh, Mr. Doherty. Uh, that is being done. If we if we wait to after Penn's dot, Penn dot does it, we pay for it. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm totally you know, understand what I'm happen. saying. Penn dot puts all this in. Hey, this would be Mr. Faulkner. What do you say? Seventy-five thousand uh, dollar? I'm not sure it's that much, Larry, but it's significant amount. It's probably over fifty. I don't, um, yeah. And they pay for it, and after it's in, we we take ownership and maintain it. After that, um, we wait until after this uh, this project's done. Then the township pays for it. 
Okay. So, so they're this gonna is... put it in as they're doing the project. Yeah, yes. Okay. All right, that's all I want to so, say. So this is just related to this project. We couldn't add another intersection to this. Is that what no. you're saying? No. Um yeah, I don't get me wrong. I, I'm, I'm totally in favor of this happening. I just everywhere in the township where we have these flashing pedestrian lights, it's in the there's minutes. a long visual runway in both yeah. directions. I, I, I understand. Ardmore Ave, Manoa Road, other places that I've seen them, and I'm just worried about the visual impediment that the SEPTA tracks provide for people coming north of Manoa from Arlington. But you have to keep in mind that right now there's nothing, so people are crossing the street with no warning. I know, but people crossing the street with no warning know they're crossing the street with no warning, and they're running across, and they're, it's, it's, the, it's the false sense of security that somebody gets stepping out into a crosswalk that's flashing and assuming that everybody's going to stop. I'm much more concerned about that, the person who just starts walking across and ends up getting bailed by a car that just didn't expect to see this coming. Again, I want this to happen. I just want to see some kind of preliminary warning farther up Manoa Road. I say up, but down toward Arlington so that people going under that bridge know this is coming. I, look, I can't be the first person to think of this. I assume PennDOT takes that into account anytime they install a new pedestrian flashing crosswalk. Very good. Thank you. President. Mr. Lewis. Yeah, I just want to remind uh, my colleagues that the purpose of the work session is to uh, discuss uh, these type of issues and um, you know we spent 10 minutes on this resolution now having discussion when it should have been held last, last week so uh, there's a purpose to the work sessions and that's to get questions answered and right. resolve issues and that's why we have a regular meeting as well so we don't have to go through those discussions so thank you mr. Lewis Oh my gosh, is it five of eight already? I just did this, Andy, because you missed last week and I wanted you to hear it this time. So, Mr. Gensler, would you please call the roll? Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Item 14, contract award purchase. Motion to award the electrical and fire alarm system contract for Niter Hall improvements to A. N. Lynch Company, Incorporated, Spring City, Pennsylvania, in the amount of $89,215, submitting the only responsible bid. Second. Motion made and seconded. I'm sorry, who am I seconding? Mr. McCloskey. Any questions? Please call the roll. Emilio? Uh, he stepped out for a moment. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Yes. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Motion to approve the purchase of cardiac equipment for the paramedic department for FISCO Control Incorporated, Richmond. Uh, in the amount of $65,553.78, submitting the lowest responsible quote. Second. second. Motion made and second by Mr. Oliva. Any questions? Please call the roll. And uh, Mr. Emilio is still out. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. And Mr. Wexler? Yes. Public Works Department 2018-2019 SALT contract for 10 Delaware County municipalities. Motion to award the 2018-2019 SALT contract to Eastern SALT Company in the amount of $50.90 per ton. Second. Motion made and second. Questions? I would just ask, Larry, is this... Um Consistent, or did uh, last year's? Uh, it's a, about a dollar a ton uh, cheaper than last year. Cheaper, excellent. Yeah. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Dr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Wax? Yes. Item 15 is a continuation of the citizens forum. Is there any member of the audience who wishes to address the board on any item that they so desire? Mr. Connell. Good evening, gentlemen. 
Chris Welcome back. 519 Kenmore Road, <clears throat> right across the street, directly across the street, walk out my front door, and there it is, Brookline School. And I'm not here to talk about that tonight. That's on another issue. Uh, I would like to say is um, today as I was going throughout the county, I, there were, I came across so many areas that were just inundated by water, you know, the deluge that came down over the night <clears throat> that surprised a lot of people because the banks overflowed, whether it was Crumb Creek, Darby Creek, Cobbs Creek, all overflowed, and there were just impeded traffic, went into home, infiltrated homes, as well as uh, stranded people, people got injured, what have you. So my concern all day long was thinking, oh my gosh, Chatham, Chatham Glen, I hope, you know, what have you. And uh, Dr. Hart and I had spoken about this in the past and what have you. And, you know, tonight I, I found out that um, uh, the deputy chief had said that there were concerns in the township, but it wasn't overwhelming as it has been in the past. I thought to myself, you know what, I certainly hope that it's because this board over the last eight years really has done their due diligence in setting up stormwater management throughout the township. And I wanna say thank you. Thank you so very much for supporting that, uh, for commissioners had in, in their areas and what have you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, to, to the residents of the 8th. <laughs> actually, actually, Dr. Hart and I have a very good relationship. We're back and forth with each other and what have you. And it's, but, but my point is, is that this board has done so much in the past eight years. This township has done so much for the community, for stormwater management. Whether we got as much rain or maybe not as much rain, I don't care. I saw what was on television tonight, and I saw that our areas, Winfield Drive and the Glen and what have you, weren't devastated from stormwater. And I, I can't believe me from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for that. And although I might be gone and forgotten, please don't forget 224 Foster Road, the Bosrick family. We did commit to them that we would try to move forward and do something with their property. There, I believe that was going to be the uh, a dog park. It's, it was the property that the township owned before and then it went back onto the market, what have you. So now it's their home, it's constantly being flooded out. So please, uh, let, let's not forget them. We did make a commitment uh, to them on, on Foster Road. And uh, Dr. Hart, thank you very much for every time that I reach out to you uh, that you respond okay. so quickly. Um, Manoa Road and uh, Caracon Drive. Kudos, good deal. Remember, uh, please don't forget about Manoa Road and Grove Place at the train station where an awful lot of people cross there every day, all well, during the day. As traffic travels, uh, west, coming from Lower Murray, and you hit the over the trestle, and then you come up, and it's probably the distance between here and maybe the other side of the door that you had the pedestrian walkway, and people are the township put in a pedestrian crosswalk. Thank you for putting that in, but yep, it's almost just as as bad as uh, there is no warning that people are crossing there. So again, I, I thank you very much for everything you've done for stormwater management. Thank you, and that you continue to do. And absolutely, and the, Chuck, you it's a big, big part of it. Thank you very, very much for everything you've done. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mr. Minutes. Connell, you did a good job. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Is that my four minutes, or still have more time? Uh, you, you used four and a half, you're good. Uh, <laughs> I think you yeah. used like eight minutes. Yeah. No, I'm just, <laughs> no, just kidding. Anyone else? That concludes the Citizens Forum. Thank you, Mr. Connell. Um, and you're right, I learned firsthand at that Grove Place Crossing, a woman stepped in front of my car this morning during that heavy rainfall, did not see her at all. She was in a black coat, 
came out of the dark clouds with the background and came about four or five feet from, and she raised her fist and I'm like, I didn't even see her. She came out of the dark and uh, very dangerous, especially in a storm like today. So, uh, so well heated and well noted. Any new business? Yeah, Bill, I would, uh, I, I would like to bring up, I've gotten several people call me or stop me on the street uh, pertaining to, we've talked about it uh, quietly, but uh, pertaining to the new library. And basically, uh, the Brookline School is what they're talking about, and they are, they're basically asking why isn't this out in the open, and why don't people have an opportunity to come and give their thoughts on the new library. So uh, what I'd like to do, I, I don't want to do it tonight, but I do believe that we should uh, have a discussion on this and let the citizens come and uh, give their opinions of uh, how they feel about that. I, I agree at the appropriate time. It makes absolute sense. We're still talking about this in executive session because it's a real estate issue. So it's not yet into the public domain, even though rumors are out there. They're uh, out there, yeah. yeah oh, oh, yeah, we know. But we haven't, we, we can't take public action or we have the right to talk about real estate transactions uh, in private session. We haven't made a decision. Well, that's on that property at all. So, get the, if we make a decision, uh, possibly I, we, they didn't have. We did discuss. Voice. I think it was discussed in our last session that it probably makes sense for you and Commissioner Hart to have a neighborhood meeting to discuss that possibility with residents and to gather input. I think we talked about you know trying to get Annunciation Hall to do that and at least gather some public input to do that. I think that's a good idea. I think several of us said that that was a good suggestion. I, j I wanted to bring it up tonight because people yeah. have asked me, and I told them I'd bring it up tonight. And sure, I think it's I think it's some there's different reasons too. For instance, uh, in this particular building, uh, we haven't had much luck, and uh, I honestly believe the young man that spoke here when we were going through the bidding and all, talking about prevailing wages uh, instead of the the low bid. When you go low bid, you don't always get the winner. So uh, I agree with that prevailing wage. Of course, with the Parking at Brookline School, 100% um, for underground parking and not parking on the street because there's not enough parking for the neighbors now. And as far as the ball fields, the kids playing up there, they've been there for uh, at least 60 years. I've lived there over 60 years, and uh, we don't want to lose any of the ball fields for the kids in the neighborhoods. Okay. Any other new business? What, what are you doing now, Bill? Uh, we're in the new. If there's any new business, we're at a commissioners meeting. And then, <laughs> and then, new building. And then uh, any other commissioners' business, Mr. D'Amelio. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know it's early, but uh, I will be having my first board meeting on October 24th, 2018, 7 p.m. at the Manoa, Manoa Fire Company. And my guest at that meeting will be State Senator Dalen Leach. He's going to give a legislative update, um, as well as talk about any progress for the road improvements along um, Westchester Pike and 476. Um, I also want to thank Jamie Santor for scheduling a meeting with PennDOT regarding uh, Walnut Hill Lane and Glendale. That was very productive. And we should see something in the near future from the township, correct, Mr. Gentile? Yes, sir. And uh, I also want to thank all of our volunteers and our emergency services and police department that were out in this severe flood flooding, as Commissioner, former Commissioner O'Connell, um, acknowledged today. It was it was very bad in a lot of areas, and thank God no one was injured, including our emergency services. Um, I think there was one water rescue by the Waterford departments. Is that am I wrong? Is that correct? Good job in that, uh, saving a life there. Um, you know, we had National Night Out last week, and it was, uh, it's always a great event. It's a chance for our residents to come and meet uh, the police officers and the canine dogs and all of our fire apparatuses. And uh, it's funny because Commissioner Connell and I, we were talking to a resident who was surprised that we had a volunteer fire company and want to know how many volunteer fire companies there were. And, you know, it's, it's amazing that people today don't realize how dedicated our volunteer firefighters are, um, the men and women that serve. Uh, they're out in weather like we had today, 
they're out in snowstorms, they're out when their families are having birthday parties, and they save the taxpayers. I mean, I've heard different figures thrown around, Chris, six, seven million dollars. Would that be accurate? Eleven million dollars. So they do save the taxpayers a ton of money, and, and, they're, and they're heroes. They really are heroes. So um, I thank them, and I thank the police for holding the National Night Out because mm -hmm. it is, it's truly very successful. The interaction between the residents and, and the police is great, and, and the crowd loves the, the presentation for what the dogs can do. They are totally, I mean, so many people came up to me amazed about how in control these dogs are and how loving they are. And it was, uh, many residents were petting the, the dogs and uh, great event. So thanks for everyone who showed up uh, for that event, and that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Levin. Thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to remind everybody, I know it's early, we set it on the agenda that Hanford Township Day is coming up Saturday, October 6th. I know it seems like a long time, but it'll be here very quickly. Um, I did also join uh, Commissioner D'Amelio at National Night Out. That was a very nice night. Um, I want to thank the police, um, the uh, be chief over there, uh, for what a wonderful job they did. I also wanted to give uh, kudos to uh, Steve from um, Secret Sauce, who provided all the food um, for free. Uh, yeah, nothing. Uh, he, he charged us nothing, and he fed everyone there with burgers and hot dogs. Um, and... Although he's in Upper Darby, uh, just give him a little plug. He opened a new place right there by the, where the crap place is, right on Township Line. So um, he really is um, um, a guy who helps out in the community. So He took donations for Hada, didn't he? Uh, and he did take yeah. donations for Hada, so another piece of the puzzle. Um, and I uh, just want to tell everybody, enjoy your summer. It was too crowded, I said. Thank you. Mr. McCluskey. Um, <clears throat> just briefly, uh, in addition to today's storm, we've also had uh, some of the other storms over the last month uh, have caused some outages in the third ward, uh, in particular areas. Uh, as many people know, um, along Darby Road, the PICO has been working in terms of working on the infrastructure and replacing wires and replacing poles, um, and we're hoping, hopeful that that will continue um, in, in areas where uh, the, the grid is not as secure as it has been. But I just remind people that the township itself does not, uh, we, we, we certainly contact PICO and uh, try to get information from them and try to find out when out of the outages will be fixed. Um, but if you do have an outage, it is important just to contact PICO. You can report it online or you can call 1-800-841-4141. I'm sorry, can I jump in here? They have an app. Uh, wonderful app. You can report your outage, and then it tells you, it gives you updates on when, um, automated updates on when the, the, the um, right. they, they're, they tell you what's happening and when your power will be back on. And they're usually pretty good because my power goes out all the time. Thanks, Pico. Mr. McCluskey, can you reiterate on that? Are they, are they changing because, because, my residents up by Eagle Road and Harrington have been complaining about the amount of times the power has gone out. Yeah, every time the power goes out there, it goes out of my So mind. is are they upgrading the lines there, or are they upgrading? And I, I don't think they, I don't have their whole, you know, five-year plan or whatever, but I know that they, they, they came uh, through the Grassland Park area. They were in Lanark <clears throat> last year, so I, I know they're, they're in, coming through our area. They're right in, now. they're in Hereford Township, upgrading the infrastructure. You know, obviously the. You know, Pico's the one who have been doing the work on Eagle Road for the past three years. So, I mean, they're, I, I know they're upgrading the infrastructure. I don't know their, the, the extent of their plans, uh, but I know it's happened in some areas. And in those areas, I think there has been improvements in terms of the frequency with which the power goes out. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, but, you know, it's... So the residents know it's, it's, it's not really something that we necessarily uh, map out for them, that they, they make the decisions and they inform us. Um, so, but that's the information to contact. I know uh, a couple of residents have called me over the last month. Um, so it's important that you notify them of the outage. And with that, uh, I, this is our last meeting of the summer, so I hope everyone uh, continues to have an, a nice and uh, productive summer and hopefully have some time away and spend some time with your family. Uh, you next month. Thank you, Mr. Siegel. Uh, yes, I just want to follow up on, on Pico. I mean, this week um, we had an incident at Eagle Road in Hillcrest that was handled extremely well by the township, by Pico, et cetera, where there was a fire underground and 
it was handled, the roads were closed to allow it to be repaired. Um, the fire companies, I believe, responded as well. Um, but it shows that in that instance, they avoided the potential of an explosion. Um, when I was meeting with Mr. Gentile, they thought they were gonna have to shut off power to essentially the northern half of the township, and they didn't. Um, but it also points out sort of the dangers that are inherent in having lines underground, which some people think is a panacea, and they have their own issues. But I wanna thank the township and the police and everyone else um, for their response to that and how quickly, essentially, the road was closed at 10, Eagle Road was closed at 10.30, and by noon it was open, and that was remarkably good. So I wanna commend them. Um, I also wanna clarify something, because it is not accurate to say that I didn't report on the property committee. I unfortunately didn't have the minutes open at the time. At the Board of Commissioners meeting on March 12th, according to the minutes of committee reports, quote, Commissioner Sigel announced that the property committee will be hiring a consultant to work with them regarding 2325 Darby Road and the Quatrani building, unquote. So for anyone who was unaware of that, it was I said it at the meeting, it was in the minutes, and I try to be candid with, the re with this board as to what the committees are doing that I chair. Separately, um, it's kind of ironic tonight because Commissioner D'Amelio and I have had many meetings and it's helped prompt, the, prompt some potential efforts to um, repair and redo the intersection of, Eagle Ro of Lawrence Road, Westchester Pike, and the Blue Route. Tonight, Marple Township is having their Board of Commissioners meeting, which I don't suspect will be done quite as early as this one, to discuss the development of the Don Guinella project and I, of the property, and I find it a little bit interesting that there was not the similar uproar about the development in Marple Township at the Blue Route, which is also a large project, but yet for whatever reason, the residents did not seem to be so concerned about that one. Uh, also, last night, um, Aqua, uh, not Aqua, PennDOT had announced that they were going to begin repaving Ellis Road and Ardmore Avenue. Uh, the weather prevented that. I was actually on the road at 9 o'clock. You certainly didn't see crews. You saw tons of uh, rain. So presumably that project will not complete this week. Um, they had intended to repave all of Ardmore and Ellis from County Line to Lawrence, and that'll continue. Uh, finally, two other sort of related interest things. First, to remind Rep everyone, our only meeting in September is on Tuesday, September 4th, the day after Labor Day. That is a regular meeting. Um, and we anticipate, according to Mr. Gentile, uh, being able to broadcast that meeting live to residents. So for the first time, we will uh, probably be live uh, for anyone who wants to watch us. Um, that meeting is on that Tuesday because on the evening of the Sunday the 9th through uh, Tuesday the 11th is the celebration of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. Um, and with that, I say thank you and enjoy a Labor Day holiday to everyone. Thank you. Mr. Holmes. Uh, Mr. President, thanks. Um, I want to thank uh, Mr. Gentile. checked in with uh, my folks in Winfield today and uh, um, while the new water uh, improvements down there uh, all held and worked and we didn't have any uh, catastrophes, um, it got uh, very close. Today's storm came close to taxing the capacity of the entire township to handle storm water, and I appreciate Mr. Gentile and all of his staff uh, who worked very hard today to um, look for the problem areas and, um, uh, and to take proactive measures to, uh, to warn folks of potential you know, potential flooding. And um, if not for the actions of uh, the entire <coughs> board and former boards, uh, uh, that to do, you know, the expensive but necessary, you know, um, stormwater management uh, uh, initiatives that we took, um, you know, today could have been a very, very different day. And so um, I appreciate uh, everybody on the board that has had the foresight and frankly, in this day and age, the courage to spend the money we needed to spend to make sure our township could handle what now are uh, once a century storms that we seem to get, you know, every, um, 
uh, every one or two years now. Um, I would also, could, talking about another once in a century storm, I would suggest that now, while the leaves are still on the trees, that our but everybody take a look at their own properties, and I would ask the township to the extent that they, um, uh, that, that they can be the eyes and the ears of this as well for all the trees that are on our, you know, that are in township right-of-ways or on the streets, um, to remember what happened last March when we had that large snowfall and ended up with neighbors of ours who, who, who were out of power for over a week. Um, and that now and the fall is the time for people to get trees trimmed. Uh, or maintained, or if necessary, taken down, um, so that we could avoid another situation like we had last March. It, um, while that storm probably culled a great deal of our most fragile trees in the township, um, it could happen again easily. It doesn't take more than a season for a tree to get uh, permanently compromised, and I would just recommend everybody in the township to take a close look at the trees um, in their own yards and in their own neighborhoods. Um, or report to your commissioner or to the township staff any township tree that you think um, looks dangerous and we could deal with it before it becomes uh, becomes a problem. Um, between now and the, um, and the next meeting, um, some, if not all, of our kids will return to school. So as I say every year, um, it's been nice to uh, drive around in the streets with people on vacation and not as much traffic around, but remember, starting on Labor Day, traffic returns and children start walking to school again. So everybody be careful. Enjoy the last couple of weeks of the summer. Um, and uh, that is all I have, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Lewis. Yes, I have a number of items. Um, let me start with uh, street signage. And I've had a conversation with our township manager about this, but um, this is a problem, I think, that's not unique to the Fifth Ward. If you drive around, you'll see um, street signs that are crooked. You'll see uh, street signs that are faded. You'll see street signs that are hidden by bushes. You'll see street signs that don't have the full name of the street because the tapes come off. Um, and you see outdated signage. So in talking to our township manager, I think in next year's budget, uh, we ought to be, I know this isn't going to be solved overnight. It's going to be, a, you know, an ongoing effort, but I think we had to be proactive and not wait for residents to call us about street signage. I think we ought to, over the next, whatever it is, two, three years, go through the township, take an inventory of our signage, working with the police and public works, and uh, make the necessary upgrades. And I know there are larger stop signs available now. The, sign, the actual sign itself is larger and re start replacing signs that are faded. I, I have signs in my board you can barely read because they they're have actually have just mildew or whatever it is uh, uh, over the surface. So um, I would urge us in, in this year's, next year's budget to, to make some provision for starting to, it's, I, I think it's really embarrassing to drive through the township and see our signage, quite frankly. So I think that's one of the areas. It's not a reflection on, on you, Larry. It's just something we t we haven't addressed before, and I think we need we need to. So I would encourage this board to support that. Uh, the second thing, um, somewhat related, but a different area, park maintenance. I think we also need to. I know Tim Denny last week um, spent some time talking about the capital side of it, uh, park park improvements, which is really important uh, because I think that's long been neglected. Uh, I think at the same time, we, we need to be doing a better job in terms of the, the maintenance of the parks themselves. And again, I don't think it's a reflection on our people um, that we have that are working, because I think they're all working hard. I don't think we have adequate staffing. Uh, I have, we have weeds growing up, for example, in uh, playgrounds. We have weeds growing up on ball fields. We have weeds growing up through uh, cracks in the, in the uh, parking lot. So I think, again, I think, not that I like to spend money, but I think this is money well spent. I think in next year's budget, we ought to think, think about adding some additional maintenance people to our uh, rec department crew, because I, I think our parks are not looking, um, you know, they're never gonna be lower marrying, uh, certainly, but they, they should be looking a lot better than they, than they do. Uh, the third thing is, uh, it was actually a recommendation of one of my constituents, um, which I think is a good one. Um, we have, we've had a lot of road work done in the township this year. Um, in particular, I, I, maybe it's unique to my ward, but it seems like every street's got something going on, whether it's Aqua or Pico or PennDOT or something. 
um, and it would be helpful to have um, something on the website, uh, something that the commissioners can distribute to their uh, email list, uh, a list of the work that is scheduled by PennDOT or PICO or Aqua, so people have a sense of what's coming up. Um, I don't know how much in advance we get that information, Larry, but I think it would be helpful to post that and also have the commissioners know uh, what is planned so we can pass that along to the residents so they know what road's gonna be closed, when and why. Uh, because unfortunately, I don't think PennDOT, well, PennDOT I know doesn't do a very good job in communicating, and Aqua and Pico are not much better. I mean, they come in and give a note on the door, and then they kind of disappear, and there are a lot of questions left unanswered. So I think it'd be helpful to do that. Um, and then finally, um, I think it's great uh, that this board uh, supported um, televising our meeting uh, and, and doing it live and as with the zoning hearing board and the planning commission I think they're that's obviously uh, the way to go and we have the capability to do that I think going hand in hand with that though is also uh, making sure our residents are well aware of uh, what's on the agenda uh, for that particular meeting so I don't know how we best do that but I'm just thinking that maybe we want to uh, once the agenda is finalized for the zoning hearing board and the planning commission and the board of commissioners that we actually um, maybe slowly scroll on the on the tv screen the actual agenda for that meeting and also post it i don't know whether it's posted on the website yes okay. yes yeah. maybe I, I think it would be helpful to post it uh, also on um, the tv so people can actually see maybe just prior to the meeting maybe for an hour or so before just post the agenda nothing but the agenda i don't, I don't know how much time we have but it would be helpful to, for people to see that way if they want to come to a meeting because they see something on the agenda, uh, they can see it on the TV and, and, and come. So I don't know whether that's something we can do or not, Larry, but, um, Take a look. but I think it would be helpful for people to know what's, what's, what's happening other than having to go to the website. If we, can, if we can do it, I don't know whether we can do it or not, but I assume we can if we just slowly scroll through the agenda. I mean, if those departments get me those agendas in a sufficient time, it yeah. should, we should be able to put it up before the, the meeting is viewed. So yeah, I think we know stupid. maybe 30 to 15 minutes before the uh, the meeting. Uh, yeah, or even if you want to do it a day before or something, I don't know, whatever, however you want to do it, I just think it's a good idea to have it, have so it out there so people can, yeah. people can see what's on the agenda. Uh, and that's all I have. Thanks, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. McGarrity. Yeah. Boy, Andy, you were wound up tonight. <laughs> uh, number one, uh, just uh, one of the things, the... Uh, George Flynn, one of our uh, police officers, retired, and uh, they give him a little send-off. They take him around in, in the uh, automobile, in the police car, and through his district. And they do this with all the officers when they retire. And it, it was, it's very nice. Uh, Deputy Chief Hagan's there. Chief Biola's there. Uh, it, the, the police officer really, he, he gets a, the last bang that he's going to get out of his dollar for you know being here for 30, 35 years. So. Uh, I would encourage the rest of the Board of Commissioners, if they can, to make uh, make these uh, retirement parties. That they And it's only a small party. They give you hot dogs afterwards if you want them. And uh, it's a half an hour thing, and you can be on your way. Uh, the second thing is I just want to report back that the uh, I went out to a lot of you, I presume, would know Jimmy McGinn, an Aston Township Commissioner, and also on the state committee who passed away suddenly. And uh, I was at his viewing and then I went to his funeral and uh, I just want to say that uh, Aston Township gave Jimmy McGinn one heck of a send off. The fire, the police, the paramedics, they really did a bang up job and I'll tell you, if you were there, you, you got tears in your eyes watching all that was going on. It was a wonderful send off. So congratulations Aston Township for the job well done. Uh, the other things I have, uh, I, I mentioned it about the uh, prevailing wage, and I know people will say with the prevailing wage, well, that's going to cost us more, but with the difficulties that we've had in this particular building, I don't know if it would cost more or cost less, because what do you pay in attorney's fees and lawsuits and things like that? So uh, I would hope that we would consider uh, the prevailing wage in the, the upcoming talks if we do build uh, a library or anything like that. So uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. McGarry. Dr. Hart. Excuse me. Uh, Jim, did you want to say something about Pat Craig? What about Pat Craig? No. Passed away. I guess huh? not. Mr. Okay. Craig uh, passed away. Passed away. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Okay. Uh, 
Mr. Craig worked for us for uh, 25 years. He worked for, for us. It was and probably longer than that, wasn't it? Probably longer than that. But uh, he retired and, and uh, he passed away over the weekend. So just wanted to pass that on to anybody. The, um, the uh, funeral is, um, is at um, St. Dennis Church on Saturday. Thank you, Commissioner Oliva. Dr. Hart. So I want, just want a few things. I appreciate Mr. Connell's uh, comments and your past work on the stormwater. Um, I certainly, it's been helpful. I don't know if we're continuing to work on it. I, you know, this storm seems like we did fine, but you never know about the next one. So keep our fingers crossed and keep working on things. Also, residents in, as I've said before, residents in Chatham Glen and um, Chatham Park area, rain gardens will help the residents who are lower in, in the ward. Um, in regards to the Brookline School, I, I mean, what is in the open? The school board at their June meeting announced that they were not interested in, they were gonna get rid of the Brookline School and they, and. Commissioner Wexler was there, expressed an interest on the part of the township in acquiring it. Nothing it has been finalized. Uh, uh, when something happened, there are no final plans, and nothing's going to happen without community input. Um, Mr. McGarry and I have talked about once if things move further along, there will definitely be um, meetings with residents in the area. So that. There's nothing going on behind closed doors beyond what the, the school board has announced that uh, they do not intend to um, continue to own the Brookline School. Uh, and finally, in regards to the um, tonight, um, my vote on the uh, the Oakmont Triangle. Really, I I think we need a comprehensive municipal plan and and I would rather see us spending money on that we've been talking about this for five six years um, there were plans to go ahead with Radnor it's fell on through it's going to cost us more more money I certainly hope that we're not going to keep one-offing areas of the township and that this is still in the budget for next year that we get moving on this because it's it's needed to to look at the the whole township and not just specific areas. I don't think you can necessarily look at what's best for, for that area without looking at the rest of the town and what the town's needs are. Um, and that's all I have, and I hope everybody does enjoy the last couple of weeks of the summer. Thank you, Dr. Hart. I'll just follow up on the, your comments about the Brookline School. Uh, and one of the reasons, Mr. McGarry, that we have the school board has not taken any official action to give the building to the township at this point. So. It, it's there's no official action that we can respond to yet as soon as they take an official vote by their school district the, their board then we have the option to move forward or decline so that's pretty much the reason that they haven't officially announced that they're going to divest themselves up they've talked about it at some of their work sessions uh, they asked if we were interested we definitely want to look at it once they take that official action uh, then we can can do that so and, and there, you know, there are obviously other people that would be interested in the building besides the township. So, um, so that was there. And we were lucky today. Vermont Warrior was flooded. It was one water rescue there, thanks to the police. And oddly enough, the Springfield Fire Company was dispatched to that site, and they made the water rescue with our police department. The incident was on our side. Rather than turn around and redispatch another fire company, they just went and got the guy and his son and got him out of the car. As of about three o'clock, the car was still sitting in about six feet of water. Um, hopefully it's receded by now and it's been towed away. And then my next meeting will be with the Hilltop Civic Association in the third week in September and uh, for updates on the ward and any other issues that residents want to discuss in the ninth ward. And that's all I have. I would entertain a motion for adjournment at this time. Motion to adjourn. No moved.